Troubleshooting Step Number 1. We need to exclude the possibility of BMS under voltage protection. To do that, you need to measure the open circuit voltage of this battery by multimeter. And please check the rating here. If it says the voltage is under 10 volts, that means your battery is in under voltage protection. At this moment, the battery is refused to charge. To cancel this protection, you need to do three things. First, ensure the ambient temperature is above 41 degrees Fahrenheit. Second, all battery terminals connections have been removed. Third, use a charger with lithium battery activation function to charge the battery to above 12.4 volts. And if the rating of your battery is higher than 12 volts, please proceed to troubleshooting step number two. Troubleshooting step number two. We need to exclude other BMS protection possibilities. For example, low temperature protection or overcurrent protection. To check this, we need to log in to DC Home App to check the battery information and confirm whether the battery has triggered any corresponding protections. I will take low temperature protection as an example. If this protection is triggered, so please make sure the environment temperature is proper. Troubleshooting step number three. Exclude the possibility of charger and the charging parameter mismatch. Please check the parameter settings of the charger. If the charging parameters are incorrect or the charger is mismatched, please switch to a proper charger and set them into proper parameters. If the charger parameters are matched, please proceed to the next step. Step number four. We need to exclude the possibility of charger malfunction. Please replace the battery or charger for cross-validation. If the charger is faulty, please take appropriate measures such as buy a new charger. If the charger is normal, please proceed to the remaining steps. Please promptly active charging the battery after over discharge. Troubleshooting step number one. We need to exclude the possibility of BMS cell over voltage protection. Please use DC Home app to check the voltage difference between battery cells and the charge based on the following criteria. During the end of charging or discharging, voltage difference between the cells should be lower than 0.4 volts. For other stages, the voltage between the cells should be lower than 0.2 volts. If the voltage difference is too high, that means the battery is fault. If the voltage difference between cells is normal, please proceed to the remaining steps. Troubleshooting step number two. We need to exclude other BMS protection possibilities. For example, low temperature protection or overcurrent protection. To check this, we need to log in to DC Home app to check the battery information and confirm whether the battery has triggered any corresponding protections. I will take low temperature protection as an example. If this protection is triggered, so please make sure the environment temperature is proper. Troubleshooting step number three. Exclude the possibility of charger and the charging parameter mismatch. Please check the parameter settings of the charger. If the charging parameters are incorrect or the charger is mismatched, please switch to a proper charger and set them into proper parameters. If the charger parameters are matched, please proceed to the next step. Step number four. We need to exclude the possibility of charger malfunction. Please replace the battery or charger for cross-validation. If the charger is faulty, Please take appropriate measures such as buy a new charger. If the charger is normal, please proceed to the remaining steps. Troubleshooting step number five. Please confirm the battery's lifespan. Please try to accurately calculate the number of life cycles and duration that the battery has been used. If the battery has exceeded the 5,000 life cycles or the warranty period is void, it can be determined as a normal battery degradation. If the battery has not exceeded the 5,000 life cycles or the warranty is still validated, please proceed to judge the battery as a faulty battery. It's crucial to avoid the following two situations. First, prolong deep discharge of the battery. Second, discharge current exceeding its maximum continuous discharger current. Step number one. We need to fully charge the battery by a suitable charger. For a 12 volts battery, the open circuit voltage should reach 14.4 volts. And for a 24 volts battery, the open circuit voltage after charging should reach 28.8 volts. Step number two. We need to exclude the possibility of main circuit fault. Disconnect all connections on the fully charged battery and let the battery stand idle for two hours. Please judge based on the following criteria. If your battery's open circuit voltage is lower than 13.4 volts, that means main circuit fault. Please refer to the after-sales process or contact our after-sales advisors. If the open circuit voltage is equal or higher than 13.4 volts, that means the main circuit is normal. Please proceed to the next step. 
Step number three. We need to verify the natural degradation of the battery. After step number two, we need to keep the battery in its original state and continue to let it stand idle overnight and ensure that the ambient temperature around the battery remains relatively constant. Then we're going to test the open circuit voltage of this battery. If it shows a significant change compared to the result of step number two, judge it as a severe capacity degradation. If the open circuit voltage shows no significant change compared to step number two, we need to proceed to the discharging test. Step one for discharge test. We need to find a resistive load with no end power, for example, a heater. Then use a fully charged battery to drive the above load, which means the heater, until the battery triggers BMS under voltage protection, at which point the battery will stop discharging record the continuous working time of the load. Last, calculate the battery capacity based on step number one and step number two, and the actual battery capacity can be calculated by rated power times discharge duration. So you can get the power consumption. If the power consumption is below 30% of full capacity, judge it as a severe capacity degradation. Otherwise it means normal. Please confirm the battery's lifespan. Please try to accurately calculate the number of life cycles and duration that the battery has been used. If the battery has exceeded the 5000 life cycles or the warranty period is void, it can be determined as a normal battery degradation. If the battery has not exceeded the 5000 life cycles or the warranty is still validated, please proceed to judge the battery as a faulty battery. Troubleshooting step number one, we need to exclude the shelf mode factor. Please check if the battery is in shelf mode. If the battery is in shelf mode, please deactivate shelf mode by normal charging or discharging process. If the battery is not in shelf mode, please proceed to other steps. Troubleshooting step number two, we need to exclude the possibility of communication channel being occupied. So we need to eliminate the possibility the battery is paired with another mobile device. If the battery is paired with other device, unpair existing connection and pair it again with the intended device. If the battery is not paired with other device, please try other steps. Troubleshooting step number three. We need to exclude the possibility of a low DC home version. Please update the DC home app to the latest version and then search the connect to the battery in the app. After the update, communication is successful. Congratulations, your problem has been solved. But if after the update the communication is still not possible, please try other steps. Troubleshooting step number four. We need to exclude electromagnetic interference. Please check whether there is electromagnetic interference where the battery is located, as it can affect the product's communication function. If it has been ruled out and the communication is successful, congratulations, the problem has been solved. Otherwise, please try another step. Troubleshooting step number five. We need to exclude BMS under voltage protection. Please measure the open circuit voltage of the battery and check if it is higher than 10 volt. If it is not, that means the battery is in under voltage protection. Under this protection, the BMS and the built-in communication module are not working. Activate the battery by using lithium battery activation mode charger. If the battery is not in under voltage protection, please proceed to other steps. Troubleshooting step number six. We need to exclude the possibility of distance. Please try to connect the product with your smart device within the range of two meters. Under this range, if you cannot successfully pair them, that means the product is faulty. Troubleshooting step number one, we need to exclude the impact of the parallel connection limit, confirm that the battery has fewer than eight parallel connected batteries, if it exceeds the quantity limit, please remove the extra batteries, if they are within the quantity limit, please try other steps. Troubleshooting step number two, we need to exclude the possibility of mixed parallel connection. Please check if the parallel connected batteries are identical, including brand, model, capacity, and voltage level. Please be noted that mixing different batteries in parallel can lead to this issue. If you don't have this problem, please try other steps. Troubleshooting step number three. We need to exclude the possibility of inconsistent initial battery voltages before parallel connection. If this problem exists, please disconnect the batteries and charge them separately to full and make sure the open circuit voltage differences are less than 0.1 volts before we connect them together. If this problem doesn't exist, please try other steps. Troubleshooting step number four, we need to exclude the possibility of non-standard parallel connection. Please check the wiring between the batteries and do a self-inspection by following questions. Question number one, whether the wiring method conforms to the official standard. Question number two, whether the wire lengths are consistent. 
Question number three, whether the wire diameter is consistent. Question number four, whether the connections are secured. If all the questions are answered by yes, please try other steps. If they are not answered by yes at the same time, please make sure all the requirements are met. Troubleshooting step number five, we need to exclude the influence of small charging and discharging current. Please check the data on the DC Home app to determine if the charge or discharge current is less than 0.2 C. So what is C for battery? Let me take an easy example. For 100 amps battery, 1 C refers to 100 amps. 0.5 C refers to 50 amps. 0.2 C we mentioned before refers to 20 amps. If charging and discharging current is below 0.2 C, please increase the charging and discharging current to resolve the unbalanced charging and discharging issue. If charging and discharging current is above 0.2 C, please identify the battery as a faulty battery. For this problem, we need to assess whether the battery cell voltages are within the normal range. Please refer to the following troubleshooting criteria. Under normal circumstance, the difference between 3.2 volts battery cells should not exceed 0.2 volts. If the battery is in the charging end phase, for example, the battery voltage is close to full charge voltage, the difference in battery cell voltages should not exceed 0.4 volts. Depending on your situation, if it meets the corresponding conditions mentioned above, it is considered a normal phenomenon. Otherwise, it is determined as a battery cell issue. Please refer to after sales process. For this problem, we need to exclude the possibility of internal temperature sensor failure. Please determine if the temperature displayed in your DC home app is an extreme value, for example 100 degrees Celsius below zero, and judge the error based on the actual environment. If DC home displays an extreme value, or the difference with the actual environmental temperature reaches 5 degrees Celsius, it can be determined as an internal temperature sensor failure. Otherwise, it can be determined as a cell fault. To solve this problem, we need to calibrate the state of charge of the battery. Please follow these steps. First, increase the charging voltage to 14.6 volts. Then charge the battery. Set the charging parameters of the charger according to the parameters shown in this chart below. When the battery voltage reaches 14.4 volts or above and DC home displays the battery state of charge has reached 100%, the state of charge calibration is completed. After that, please remember to change the charging voltage back to 14.4 volts. If you have multiple batteries in the system, please check your battery bank by the following standards. First, please make sure that the maximum quantity of this battery for parallel connection is 8. If you have extra batteries, please uninstall them. Step number 2, please check the parallel batteries are in the same brand model capacity and nominal voltage level. Step number 3, please make sure the voltage of batteries is consistent before parallel connection. Step number 4, please connect your batteries by referring to this instruction. And then please make sure the gauge length of the wire are exactly the same, and also the connections on the terminals are secured. Step number five, we need to calibrate the state of charge of the battery. Please follow these steps. First, increase the charging voltage to 14.6 volts. Then charge the battery. Set the charging parameters of the charger according to the parameters shown in this chart below. When the battery voltage reaches 14.4 volts or above and DC home displays the battery state of charge has reached 100%, the state of charge calibration is completed. After that, please remember to change the charging voltage back to 14.4 volts.